Hi guys, it's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also knows Mark Zikri Space Command. And as you can see, I am here in the future. Actually, I'm staying at the Future Inn, which is perfect for me, at uh, in Wales, in Cardiff, Wales, where I am a judge at the film festival along with Elaine and uh, and screening the uh, Space Command half the first half hour of the Space Command pilot. And um, it's been going great. We're actually going to be doing a film, a science fiction film festival next year here in Wales. And I also got to sit down and spend some time with Alistair Reynolds, the great science fiction writer. And uh, yeah, it's just it was just, it's just been a lot of fun. And I met uh, an Indian director named Anurag, who's uh, done 115 films, and he's also the writer director behind Sacred Games on Netflix, a, a TV series. So he and I uh, really hit it off, and so he'll be coming to LA and visiting and. Lots of cool stuff going on. So, um, but I just wanted before we move on. I know I've been doing my history of science fiction novels, and then I'll be doing my history of science fiction films, and then the history of science fiction in TV and radio. And before we move on to films, I just wanted to have a postscript about um, uh, science fiction novels because originally, you know, when we started with Jules Verne, I want to talk about the evolution of of what what science fiction explores and the expectations of science fiction. Because when we were uh, starting with, you know, well, Mary Shelley, of course, who kicked it all off, she was telling a cautionary tale about how there are certain things we shouldn't meddle with and we should take responsibility for the results of our experiments. And uh, But then when we got to Jules Verne, it was much more during the period of exploration and expansion. And, and he was basically looking, and it was during the Industrial Age, the beginning of the Industrial Age. So he was basically saying, well, here's a cool scientific thing. What if we, you know, went to the moon? What if we went under the ocean? What if we had submarines? What if we, you know, took a journey to the center of the Earth? How cool would that be? So there was a great optimism and enthusiasm in his work. Then we get to H.G. Wells, who's much more... Um, pessimistic about man's future and man's uh, role in the universe but still the breadth of science fiction imagination was huge and that's why he uh, in my book H.G. Wells is the father of modern science fiction but then once we get into um, the 20s and the 30s and then particularly as we move into the 40s 50s and 60s science fiction basically was dealing with two very different and specific um, issues. One was an optimism and, an, and a proselytization for the space program, for landing on the moon, colonizing Mars, uh, you know, jumping to the stars, all of that stuff. And there was an expectation that we would be doing that and doing it soon. Often, uh, the landing on the moon, when they were writing in the 40s and 50s about it, they were posit positing that it would be in 1965. We made it by 1969, but no one guessed that we would go to the moon and stop. And so, on the, on the one hand, there was the optimism of that and the expectation that that was the future we were going to get and then there was the um, the counterweight of dystopia such as 1984 and, and uh, Fahrenheit 451 even though it is an, ultimately an optimistic novel and um, and then of course the after the bomb stories so we were we were on the two um, counterpoints of, of science fiction expectations either we would destroy ourselves or and this was the more likely future we would we would colonize space and then but now what happened was now although science fiction opened up greatly in terms of who was writing it so you didn't have women needing to write under male pseudonyms anymore they could write as themselves you had you had a wider much wider diversity of the people writing science fiction all races all sexual orientations and so forth whereas you know Arthur C Clarke could not deal with the fact that he was gay in his writing in the 50s and 60s by the time we got to the present day, writers were, were actively exploring sexual themes and their own sexuality. So, uh, so this has opened up things in a good way, but the, uh, but the thing that I'm concerned about is that now science fiction, particularly novels, uh, tend to turn inward, look inward, and they're exploring, like a, movie, like a novel like Ready Player One, it's basically exploring video games and, 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 and going into video games, and it's not the wonderful expansive vision of who we might become and what we might do that you saw in Star Trek and so many of the great science fiction novels of the 50s and 60s, particularly the, the 50s and early 60s. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm sad about this. It's, it's it, you know, a few weeks ago they, they premiered the movie First Man, which is about Neil Armstrong as landing on the moon. And it's very sad to me because when it happened, we all expected it was the first step of what would be many steps outward. And instead, that was it, <laughs> basically. And NASA, I don't believe NASA is ever going to have the, the political will to go to Mars. I think if it's going to happen, it's going to be Elon Musk and, uh, and guys like that. But I think he's very serious about sending people to Mars. But, but meantime, 
space, manned space exploration has become something historical and musty. Essentially, we're looking back at that. It's almost like when I was born, and I would look back at World War I or World War II, which were uh, events that I was not around to experience, thank God. But they just seemed like historical events. And I think the moon, the moon landing has faded into that. And we really don't see ourselves as, as this colonizing um, species going out into the, into the solar system and the stars. And uh, and I and you know I wish I wish that could become our future expectation again because now in science fiction you either have something that's extrapolating the world we live in and dealing with people getting more and more turned inward and more and more living in fantasy uh, versus when they do write about space going cultures it's very much as though we're writing um, a mythology or or fiction that it's not something we expect to do it's something. It, it, it's it's wish fulfillment, and again, I'm not ragging on any of this, but I'm I, I'm just very very glad that we have a resurgence now of people who think you know who are working hard to get us back into space as as a species, and um, you know I know our robot probes are going out to the various points in the solar system, and that's great. I I love all of that, but uh, but I'd love to see human beings on Mars and and beyond, and that's what I'm writing about in Space Command. And here in the future and uh, but anyway that's about it for now but I just wanted to check in and give this little postscript about the the, the movement of the genre as a whole over the last several hundred years and um, the next the next video we'll be doing is about um, science fiction film and its wonderful history so that's it for now from Cardiff Wales from uh, from the future it's Mark Zikri and we'll talk to you really soon bye bye